Okay, so we will talk today about receipts uh, in a sharded blockchain, specifically how to make receipts arrive from one blockchain, from one shard chain to another shard chain in exactly one block. Uh, so first, let's see let's see what the problem is. And I will use Nightshade, which is near sharding design for the for the example. Uh, so in uh, in Nightshade. Uh, there's a main, main chain which produces blocks every, well, let's say a few seconds. Uh, and each of those blocks for every short contains one or zero, um, we call them chunks. So for example, let's say there's exactly four shards. And every, every block will contain one or zero chunks for each shard. Uh, those chunks, they build on top of the last chunk that, that was produced for that shard. And so effectively, those chunks, they kind of represent a shard chain, right? So this chunk in the, in the, in the first shard and the third block is, that, uh, is building on top of the chunk that was included last time for the same shard. Yeah, OK. And so for simplicity of this, of this presentation, we will not look at the, at the main chain blocks. We will just look at the, at the short chain, at the chunks. And so the, uh, so the short chains, they produce, uh, the shards, they produce chunks uh, at some time intervals. And so we're going to say like time interval zero, time interval one, time interval two, et cetera. So what we want to happen is in, a, in an optimistic case where two shards do not skip chunks, which in reality is going to be the case most of the time, assuming that the, uh, the uptime is sufficient of the validators and they're not skipping, skipping bits, we want to achieve the following, that if a transaction that touches multiple shards arrives at certain height, so let's say at height zero in one shard, uh, so that's transaction, then the receipt of the transaction, which effectively executes the second part of the transaction, arrives to the sec to the next shard at the very next block. That sounds like it's, it should be very simple uh, and doable, uh, but there is a challenge. There is a problem, and the problem is the following. Uh, the, the, uh, to understand the problem, let's first see how, how blocks are processed and produced and, uh, and what is the actual timeline of producing a block. Right, so if we, if we draw... Uh, if this axis is time, and we look at the blocks and what happens, then there's a particular moment in time, or other chunks, right, not blocks. There's a particular moment in time when the chunk for, uh, for shard zero was produced. Uh, and then the, the, the question is whether the block producer or chunk producer who produced the chunk validated the transactions in the chunk before sending it out. And so, for example, in, Bit in Bitcoin, if you produce a block, you do validate transactions before you send the, send the block. Uh, it, has, it has a problem. Uh, it has a problem that uh, if, uh, if, the, if the block producer of chunk zero validated the transactions before uh, and computed the new state before sending the chunk, then uh, it means that any other uh, chunk producer, so let's say chunk producer one, uh, they cannot start validating the same chunk before chunk producer of, of, uh, of this chunk finished validating it because it wasn't sent before it was validated, right? And so these two events, the chunk producer validating a chunk and any other recipient in the system, any other validator, for example, chunk producer for the next height validating the chunk, they, they end up being serialized one after another. But naturally, the chunk producer of shard one cannot produce chunk at height one until they validated the chunk at height zero. Yeah, question. So you're drawing like, there are two shards there, right? Oh, that, those are, that's one shard and two chunk producers, sorry. So that's chunk producer one. Chunk producer for height zero and chunk producer for height one. But it's within the same shard, right? So if you do validate transactions before you send out the chunk, what ends up happening is you create a chunk, you validate it, then you send it out. The next chunk producer has to receive it validated before they can produce the next chunk. Uh, and then the same happens again, right? The, the zeroth 
uh, chunk producer receives the chunk, validates it before producing the next of their own at height two. Sorry, this is one. Um, and so therefore, the valid validation happens serialized twice. And validation is actually pretty expensive. It's maybe not the biggest bottleneck in the, in the system, but it does take time. And so that ideally should be removed. And so instead of that, near and many other blockchains, but near specifically, which is going to be relevant, um, operates in a different way where when you produce a chunk, you do very basic validation of transactions. Specifically, you only validate that the transaction issuer has money to cover the gas price, uh, accumulates transactions in the chunk, and immediately broad broadcasts it. And that chunk is considered valid even if it has invalid transaction. Invalid transaction just charges the gas but, uh, but remains in the chunk. Right. And why it is important? It is important because uh, the chunk producer, when they broadcast the chunk, they don't know the post state route. They don't know the state route as of after applying the transactions. And so therefore, that post state route cannot be stored in the chunk. And that also means that the receipts that are going to be produced as a result of applying this chunk, they are not included in the chunk as well. Right. So receipts will only be known when everybody else receives the chunk and processes it, right? Uh, and so this is where the challenge happens, is that by the time, um, now let's consider another shard, right? So there's another chunk producer, let's call them chunk producer two, uh, and they're producing in a different chunk shard. So, so, that, uh, so this is shard zero, let's call it S0. This is S1, also S0, and this is shard one. So when they receive the chunk, uh, or like some information about chunk that was produced for the shard zero, they do not know yet. Uh, they don't know the receipts, but also they cannot apply it. Why? Because uh, they don't see the full shard, the full chunk, in the sense that if there's 100 shards, it is infeasible for every chunk producer in every shard to send the full chunk to every other shard, right? So effectively, the chunk producer in shard one will not see the full chunk from shard zero. They cannot see the full full chunk from every shard. So all that they receive is they receive some header and some uh, information with it. And so in particular, they cannot, they cannot receive the receipts from, shard, from, this, from this shard, but also they cannot uh, reproduce the receipts because they cannot apply the chunk. They don't see the full chunk. Go ahead. They don't even know whether it's, this chunk is relevant to them, right? They, they don't even know if, if, if it will have any. Uh, they do know if the chunk is relevant when the block is produced. Like when the main, ch ch uh, main chain block is produced, uh, so this is the main chain block, another main chain block. By the time by the time they receive the main chain block, they know all the chunks which are included. So at least they know that the, that the chunk is actually is included on the main chain. And assuming heavy load, you probably expect most of the short sending receipts to most of the shorts. So the no chunk is included. They they sort of know that probably there are receipts coming from that from the chunk, but they don't know. But they don't know what what the receipts are. Right. And so coming back to this picture, uh, now that we discussed that problem, so what happens is uh, in this shard, whomever is going to be producing this chunk, by the time they produce chunk, they have no way of knowing the receipts as of applying this chunk. Right. And that's the biggest problem. There is no way for us uh, to do that. If, if we did go with the approach where the chunk is fully applied before, before it is sent, that problem would be solved. Because then the chunk producer would have known the receipts as of applying the chunk. And so whatever message they're sending to the other shard, that message would, would just include the receipts. But again, that, that becomes significantly slower. Right. Okay, so what, what can we do? We definitely cannot, without some magic, with, as we just discussed, we definitely cannot know the receipts by the time we're creating the chunk. But also we don't, know to, we don't need to know the receipts by the time we're creating the chunk. We need to know the receipts by the time we're executing it, right? So in reality, uh, and so let's say this, this chunk produces, produces chunk one for the short one, right? They don't need, uh, and so later down the road, someone else is applying it. In reality, we don't need to know receipts, the receipts at this point when we create the chunk. We do need to know the receipts by the time we apply the chunk, right? And so that makes sense. And so the way it is done today uh, is the following. Um, when, uh, uh, when a chunk producer, so in this produ case, one, one of the chunk producers of shard zero produces the chunk, uh, we already have to distribute small parts of the chunk to every 
block producer in every shard. This is how data availability in Natchez works, right? So when they do that, uh, they also, uh, actually, let, let's use one as an example. One is a better example. <clears throat> so by the time chunk producer created the chunk one, the very, the very last thing they did before that is they applied chunk zero, right? So they just, they, they received chunk zero, they had the state, they applied it. Uh, they, know the, they know the new post state route and they know all the new receipts. Uh, so when they create a new chunk, chunk at height one, they do the following. First of all, the header of this chunk will contain a pre-state root, uh, which is the post-state root for the previous chunk. But it will also include the receipt, the receipt, uh, Merkle, Merkle root of all the receipts produced as of after applying zero, right? So what, we don't know yet the receipts which will be produced after applying one, but we do know receipts that will produce after applying zero. So th there's a Merkle root of all those receipts, and also those receipts are sorted by the destination shard ID, and so you can prove any subset of those receipts going to the, to a single shard in a single Merkle proof. And so when they when they when they like cut this little uh, chunk into small pieces to send to every validator for data availability. Together with those little pieces, they also send all the receipts relevant to the particular block producer for their shard, right? So when this little little thing it goes to this uh, chunk producer in the shard one, all the receipts that go from shard zero to shard one as of after applying this chunk, they will be included in the message. Why draw an arrow like this? Shouldn't it be going to chunk number two in in shard? As, as oh, like forward? Yes. Um, I mean, you're drawing. So, so in time, in time, so like, I, so it, it, it will not get, yeah, it will not get included into this chunk, right? Because this chunk and this chunk, they produce concurrent. Yes. Right? So yeah, so you're right. So it goes like in time, it, it will land around here, right? Uh, now, what's important is that when you receive a block, a particular block, and you see chunk headers in it, that block is considered orphaned until for every, ch for every shard and for every chunk included, you either have the full chunk, if that's some shard you validate, or you have uh, this little one part if it's not a shard you validate. And there are protections in place which protect against lazy behavior. So you cannot pretend you know it. If you pretend you know it, there's a good chance you will be slashed. There's a protection in place. So you will not unorphan the block. You will not consider the block valid until you have those little one parts for every chunk that is included. And that also means that you have all the receipts for every shard. And those receipts are, are provable because there's a Merkle root here, right? Uh, in the header, that header is in the block, uh, and uh, and you have the Merkle proof against that. All receipts with every every part. You you send all the relevant receipts for the rece for the destination person for with the, with the with the part that goes to that person. Yes. Right. And so now, by the time I need to apply chunk one, uh, I would only apply chunk one if I receive the block which has chunk one. Right. So if if we draw these chunks, uh, well, unfortunately, I don't use the shard ID. Right. So so let's use. So it's as as zero, as zero, as zero, as zero, and this is all as one, right? So this uh, as zero one and, and as one one, right? So this is the chunk one for shard zero. This is chunk one for shard one. I will only apply this chunk when I process this block. I only process this block if it is not an orphan. It is only not an orphan if I have one part for every chunk included, including the chunk chunk one for shard zero. And so those, by the time I'm applying this chunk, I don't know the receipt, right? So we guarantee that by the time you're applying chunk at height one, you have all the receipts from all the chunks that are included at the same height. Can you repeat again, we apply block when we either have uh, a full chunk for each shard, or for some of them we have only like one part? Right. So. Every every block producer, there's a subset of shards they care about. That's the subset of shards that they validate. But there's another subset of shards way larger that they don't validate. And so you need the full chunk for every shard you fully validate. And you need just one part with the receipts for the shards that you do not validate. Uh, either way, you will have the receipt. If you have one part, that receipt was sent to you with the Merkle proof. If you have the full chunk and you validate the shard, then naturally you applied the previous chunk so you you have the receipts locally because you computed them right so either way you have all the receipts and so that guarantees a that 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 gives you uh, one block uh, cross shard transactions right oh sorry this is zero because the the receipt which was created as a result of applying this chunk will be processed 
already uh, as, of, as of the time this chunk is applied. So there's exactly one block between the first and the second hop of the transaction. And the same applies if, if, if it sends a further cross shard transaction, it will also be applied in the very next block. Uh, and uh, moreover, we guarantee that receipts don't get lost. This is another problem that many blockchains face today, that the sharded blockchains, is that they don't have any guarantee that the receipts will be applied. Here, uh, if the receipt is not sent, if it's not part of the Merkle proof, that's a slashable behavior because every other participant in the same shard chain, they will also apply this chunk. They will also get the receipts. They will also compute the Merkle proof. If the Merkle proof doesn't match the Merkle proof included in the header, that's easily provable cryptographically, and that's a slashable behavior. So everybody will arrive to the same proof. Every recipient and every other shard, they, they will check against the proof. They will know they have all the receipts. So receipts cannot get lost. Receipts have guaranteed delivery. Uh, and the only last problem, which we're not going to discuss very deeply today, is that uh, there is a problem that if all the shards send receipts to a single shard, that will spam, spam the shard, right? Uh, so we're not going to go very deep into that. But th this is also partially solved because you can accumulate the receipts, but you don't have to apply all of them at once. You can put them into the queue, and then you just process the first 100 receipts that got into the queue the, uh, the earliest. And then the only problem is that how you prevent the queue from growing indefinitely. And I think the only way to do that is to fail transactions if the queue is full. Right, so if by the time you apply the chunk, the queue, the destination queue for shard one is full, you will fail any transaction that tries to go to shard one. Cool. So that covers the receipts. You have more questions? Yeah. Awesome. So um, this guarantee, right? I mean, that basically allows you to say that your yeah, receipts are not lost when you mm -hmm. produce block when we either have the full chunk that we care about mm -hmm. or we have like one part of whatever we not care about. Yeah. But it includes receipts. Yes, that's correct. It's supposed to be like, like this is what allows sharding because you care about all the small uh, mm -hmm. of the sh all the shards, right? And everything else you kind of don't care. So it's like right. a little bit of the, of the overhead. So I, I I'm, uh, I have a question that is actually a little bit of the overhead because if we have a system where we have many shards and most of the transactions are cross shard transactions, if like if we, let's say we have financial system, people are just sending money in between each other, mm -hmm. and like hundred shards, right? I mean, most of the transactions are going to be cross shard transactions, which means like the content of the block for, for of the chunk is going to be half receipts, half half transactions that just arrived. Right. The question is. Do, the, do all of the receipts go to the same shard? Because this one part, it doesn't contain all the receipts. It only contains oh. receipts which go to the shards that the receiving person cares about, right? Oh, I see. So basically, in this system, then it would be like, if I, if I, if I care about one shard, then on average, all the receipts accumulated from all one part says, I do not care about, are probably going to be on the same volume as yes. the transaction. Yes, yes. So if the system is not skewed, if it's well balanced, yeah. then, then you will be receiving as many receipts as you receive transactions, which is definitely viable. It is still a problem, though, that if you're in a short that is super popular, you might be getting way too many receipts. That can be solved in many ways that we did not discuss. Like you can you can limit how many receipts can go to a particular short to some constant, like you know, three three x. Uh, uh, something like one over number of shards multiplied by three, something like that. Cool. More questions? No? Nope. Okay. So that covers our first lunch series. Thanks everyone for listening.